When he woke, it was late afternoon. He lay there looking at the stained asbestos ceiling. He sat up and pulled off his boots and socks and examined the bandages on his heels. He went into the bathroom and looked at himself in the mirror, and he took off his shirt and examined the back of his arm. It was discolored from shoulder to elbow. He walked back into the room and sat on the bed again. He looked at the gun lying there. After a while, he climbed up onto the cheap wooden desk and with the blade of his pocket knife set to unscrewing the air duct grill, putting the screws in his mouth one by one. Then he pulled the grill loose and laid it on the desk and stood on his toes and looked into the duct. He cut a length from the Venetian blind cord at the window and tied the end of the cord to the case. Then he unlatched the case and counted out a thousand dollars and folded the money and put it in his pocket and shut the case and fastened it and fastened the straps. He got the clothes pole out of the closet, sliding the wire hangers off onto the floor and stood on the dresser again and pushed the case down the duct as far as he could reach. It was a tight fit. He took the pole and pushed it again until he could just reach the end of the rope. He put the grill back with its rack of dust and fastened the screws and climbed down and went into the bathroom and took a shower. When he came out, he lay on the bed in his shorts and pulled the chenille spread over himself and over the submachine gun at his side. He pushed the safety off. Then he went to sleep. When he woke, it was dark. He swung his legs over the edge of the bed and sat listening. He rose and walked to the window and pulled the curtain back slightly and looked out. Deep shadows. Silence. Nothing. He got dressed and put the gun under the mattress with the safety still off and smoothed down the dust skirt and sat on the bed and picked up the phone and called a cab. He had to pay the driver an extra $10 to take him across the bridge to Ciudad Acuna. He walked the streets, looking into the shop windows. The evening was soft and warm, and in the little Alameda grackles were settling in the trees and calling to one another. He went into a boot shop and looked at the exotics, crocodile and ostrich and elephant. But the quality of the boots was nothing like the Larry Mahans that he wore. He went into a pharmacia and bought a tin of bandages and sat in the park and patched his raw feet. His socks were already bloody. At the corner, a cab driver asked him if he wanted to go see the girls, and Moss held up his hand for him to see the ring he wore and kept on walking. He ate in a restaurant with white tablecloths and waiters in white jackets. He ordered a glass of red wine and a porterhouse steak. It was early, and the restaurant was empty save for him. He sipped the wine and when the steak came, he cut into it and chewed slowly and thought about his life. He got back to the motel a little after ten and sat in the cab with the motor running while he counted out money for the fare. He handed the bills across the seat and he started to get out, but he didn't. He sat there with his hand on the door handle. Drive me around to the side, he said. The driver put the shifter in gear. What room, he said. Just drive me around. I want to see if somebody's here. They drove slowly past his room. There was a gap in the curtains. He was pretty sure he hadn't left there. Hard to tell. Not that hard. The cab tolled slowly past. No cars in the lot that hadn't been there. Keep going, he said. The driver put the shifter in gear. What room, he said. Just drive me around. I want to see if somebody's here. They drove slowly past his room. There was a gap in the curtains he was pretty sure he hadn't left there. Hard to tell. Not that hard. The cab tolled slowly past. No cars in the lot that hadn't been there. Keep going, he said. The driver looked at him in the mirror. Keep going, said Moss. Don't stop. I don't want to get in some kind of a jackpot here, buddy. Just keep going. Why don't I let you out here and we won't argue about it? I want you to take me to another motel. Let's just call it Square. Moss leaned forward and held a hundred dollar bill across the seat. You're already in a jackpot, he said. I'm trying to get you out of it. Now take me to a motel. The driver took the bill 
and tucked it into his shirt pocket and turned out of the lot and into the street. He spent the night at the Ramada Inn, out on the highway, and in the morning he went down and ate breakfast in the dining room and read the paper. Then he just sat there. They wouldn't be in the room when the maids came to clean it. Checkout time is 11 o'clock. They could have found the money and left. Except, of course, that there were probably at least two parties looking for him. And whichever one this was, it wasn't the other. And the other wasn't going away either. By the time he got up, he knew that he was probably going to have to kill somebody.